How's it going everyone? I hope you're all doing good. Welcome to another drawing tutorial. In this one I'm going to be walking you through the grid method and I've done this in the past, I've covered it in previous tutorials. However, a few of you have been asking me to go over it again and I'm currently starting another realistic drawing guide and so I thought I could use this beginning stage as the opportunity for me to do that. Overall with this drawing guide I'm going to try taking a more hyper realistic approach but I'll get more into that as we progress through this video. Let's get on with it. <laughs> Hyperrealism, I'm not sure if any of you will be familiar with the term, but let me go ahead and explain. So hyperrealism is a genre of painting and sculpture resembling a high resolution photograph. Hyperrealism is considered an advancement of photorealism by the methods used to create the resulting paintings or sculptures. Now this can also apply to drawing and things, and yeah, I took the definition from Google, but it, it sums it up pretty well. So it's this idea that an artist can create a piece of artwork from a photograph, and in the end it's going to look pretty much identical to a photograph and so because of that there's loads of mixed views and opinions on the subject some people say what's the point in creating artwork like that when there's a photograph that exists whatever it might be there's loads of arguments for and against it and art overall is subjective anyways I, I don't really want to get into that however the way that I look at it is if you enjoy the process of actually creating something then that in itself should be enough to justify doing it and uh, most of the time we create art for our own enjoyment anyways so who cares but yeah, today I'm going to start and make an attempt at creating a hyper-realistic drawing. Now I'm not sure how hyper-realistic this will actually end up looking. A lot of these artists who specialise in the subject, they seem to work at a very big scale so they can easily put a lot of detail into the artwork. However, I'm going to be working on an A4 sheet of paper, so I'm not sure how much that will affect the process. But I'll go ahead and try my best and uh, through these videos I'll be able to document the process and talk about the techniques I'm going to be using. in this part, I'm just going to begin the drawing, start outlining using the grid method, so let's get into it. Okay, so I've been talking for long enough now, so I've gone ahead and switched us to a top-down view and we can start drawing. Now in the past, I've done a few videos explaining something called the grid method. I'll put them here if you want to watch them, but the grid method is what I'm going to be using to start this off again. And I've seen a few of you asking me to walk you through it, and so I'll use this as an opportunity for me to do that. The grid method is a convenient way to help outline the drawing and uh, get the proportions accurate. I sometimes go ahead and freehand a preliminary sketch, but that's not as reliable and it can be quite difficult for beginners. So I recommend the grid method. Anyways, through this guide, I'm going to be working from a reference image and I've gone ahead and printed an image out. Now, I'm going to be creating a portrait drawing of Heisenberg. I'm not sure if all of you will be familiar with the TV show Breaking Bad, but this is what I'm going to be using as the reference image. Now for the grid method, it's good to have an image printed out. If you are working with your reference on a computer screen, maybe for some reason you, you can't print the image out, um, you can go ahead and create a grid digitally and I'll show you how to do that in another video. Um, for this video, however, I just want to focus on creating the grid on an image and transferring it onto the drawing that way. Whereas in a future video, I'll cover some alternative methods and actually show you how to work from a screen. I'm going to put some white paper under this so that you can see it a bit easier because the image is quite dark. But now we have the printout and the paper where I'll be drawing and I'm going to go ahead and start gridding this out. So we need to take a ruler and it can be at any scale you choose. I normally go for inches so for instance each square in my grid will be about 1 inch by 1 inch and the first thing is to take the reference image and grid this out first. So as I'm measuring the width of the image it's actually just below 8 inches so I've marked that point onto the paper. I can place a mark for every inch along the bottom. Also for this example I'm going to create the grid using this yellow pencil so that you can see it easier. You can go ahead and create your grid using whatever you want but what I'm going to do now is simply repeat these markings I have just made over on the top of the image and then I'm going to also measure the height and so I'm going to measure this grid about 11 inches. So at the bottom here we have a small cut off point but we can just ignore that. Also it might be worth me mentioning that when you are making the grid you might find it easier to round it up to the nearest inch. So for example the height of the image here I've rounded it up to about 11 inches and because of that we have that cut off point at the bottom but we can just ignore that because it's not really an important part. I am going to be focusing on drawing that one part of the drawing and uh, rounding it up to the nearest inch makes it a bit more simple when it comes to creating that grid over on the piece of paper. So for instance this grid I've just created is about 11 high and 8 wide but I'll go ahead and start drawing the lines to each of these marks and then that creates the grid. 
Eventually, once we have the grid drawn out on the reference image, we are then able to duplicate the same grid onto the paper. Now, I always use a light pencil like a 2H, and we want to lightly draw in the grid lines. Make sure you do this lightly so that you can erase them later on, and uh, all I'm really doing here is matching the reference with the paper and recreating the same grid. Like I said earlier, this grid I've made is 1 inch by 1 inch, but you can choose to do this at any size and scale. Okay, so now it's time to start outlining, and this is the part that requires some observation skills and judgment. So you have to try and focus on the individual squares of the grid and keep looking at the reference. Treat every part of the grid separately and look at how different parts of the image come in contact with the grid lines. You can even use a ruler again to measure other distances on the reference and then mark them in your drawing. I always create my outlines lightly because it's common for me to adjust them or tweak them a little bit. Just take your time with this stage because it's going to be the most important. You don't want to be 5 hours into a drawing and realise you have drawn the eye in the wrong position, so uh, always be aware of where you place your marks and outlines. You don't have to go into too much detail, sometimes I see people outlining the shadows and lighter areas of the drawing so you can do that if you feel like it would help, but I usually just pay more attention to that as I start to work into that later with texture and shading. Sometimes this won't be 100% accurate but it's a reliable way to start and it's also a more skilled way compared to uh, tracing for instance, but keep observing and uh, double checking the placement of the outlines. Remember that you can always adjust them later, so the process is pretty much the same all the way through. Okay, so I've finally finished outlining and I've also done this pretty lightly as well. It might not have picked it up very well on the camera, so I'll try and get a bit of a close-up. But you can see how I was just relating to the actual grid we created on the reference and then coming back to the drawing and trying to... Uh, use the grid to assist where I place these outlines. So there we go, that was a quick walkthrough of how to start a drawing using the grid method. And there's loads of different ways to go about starting a drawing, but when it comes to realistic drawings specifically, and uh, especially for beginners, I think that the grid method is probably one of the most reliable ways to go about it. And um, it's really helpful and easy to apply it to your work, to be able to create accurate proportions before you then work into it with more detail, like the texture and shading. And I've covered the grid method quite a few times in the past so this is probably going to be the last time I actually do that I want to start looking at different styles of drawing and how you can begin them kind of drawings and um, for instance if you are working from life or working from imagination there's loads of ways to begin them kind of drawings and create construction before you then work into it more permanently because that's what it's all about it's all about starting off correctly with the construction before you then can work into it with more confidence because you don't want to be working into something where the construction is wrong for from the start and then you get like five hours into the drawing and you realize it's all wrong that i've been in that position it's not good but i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching today have yourself a great day and i'll uh, i'll see you in the next one